Hello YouTube and welcome to Full Dottle, a channel dedicated to tamping topics such as pipes, tobaccos, lore, and more. I am your host, the Bearded Briarman, and without further ado, let's get lit. Welcome back everyone, and on this episode of Full Dottle, I'm going to be doing a first impression of GLP's Quiet Nights. I don't have the tin of this, this was one of the tobaccos sent to me in the Jojo Piper Yabo that I did, and this one was already open. However, I haven't smoked it yet, and I've never had GLP's uh, Quiet Nights, so this is my first impression. I have smelled it just a little bit, but let me describe to you the tin note. Absolutely wonderful. It's got that peaty, earthy, smoky Latakia in there. You can smell just a little bit of the breadiness from the Virginias. Oh, just a very deep, rich, Balkan or English type uh, aroma. Let's read what TobaccoReviews.com says about it. GLP's Quiet Nights Old London Series. Rich, deep, contemplative, ripe red Virginias, fine orientals, smoky cypress Latakia, and a pinch of Acadian Perique are pressed and matured in cakes before being sliced. The sophisticated flavors and exotic aroma provide a wonderful backdrop for quiet moments of reflection. A good book, and if you are so inclined, perhaps a wee dram. The contents of this blend are Latakia, Oriental Turkish, Perique, and Virginia, with the Virginias being Red Virginias. It notes that the strength is medium, no flavoring detected. The taste is medium to full, comma, full, so in between medium to full and full. And the room note is pleasant to tolerable. When I first got this from Jojo Piper, the tin had a date of February 16th, 2019, so it had just a little over a year on it, and um, almost a year and a half now. And uh, I was surprised to find that there was actually plume on this tobacco. And I tried to get a picture of this, and unfortunately I couldn't do it with my phone. Uh, because I don't have a mount for my microscope for it. But I do have, I bought several years ago in another endeavor, I bought several years ago a, mic, a handheld microscope. And this, you can get these things, they're very cheap. I think this one was six or seven dollars on Amazon.com. And uh, anytime you have plume, I would highly recommend that you check it to make sure that it's not mold. Mold can be very harmful or toxic to you if you smoke it. So the first thing that I did, I looked at this tobacco and it is quite obviously not mold. It is plume. You can clearly see the crystalline structure of the shiny little bits. They aren't fuzzy. They are crystalline in nature. And so that is a very good indicator of plume. Plume is going to be shiny, and it's going to look like shards of glass sticking up, generally in a crystalline uh, floral formation. Anytime you have mold, it's going to look like fuzzy hair, like um, a dust bunny that's under your bed. It's going to be fuzzy and, and ball-like. If you see the fuzzy ball-like uh, structure, unfortunately, you're going to have to throw it out. There really is, now you can look online, and I'm sure you can find people that have quick fixes for mold. Do not do that. Mold is um, the, the root structure, if you will, of it, goes deep into anything that they are growing on. You cannot simply get rid of it. Just like with wood and other uh, surfaces that mold grows on, there is a very extensive 
uh, procedure to be able to rid that of the mold and, and to be able to stop it. You're not going to be able to do that with your tobacco. If you find mold on your tobacco, unfortunately, you have to throw it out. Plume, on the other hand, generally is caused because of the oils that are in the leaf. As the, as the tobacco ages, uh, a microbial process starts to decompose the tobacco, which causes the cell membranes to be um, deteriorated through um, uh, what, what has been termed fermentation. But what's actually going on is, is the cell membrane is breaking down and opening up, or if it's pressed, they are being um, burst, and the oils and, and fluids that are inside are coming out. Now, those coalesce and eventually turn into what appears to be a crystalline structure. However, all the reading that I've done on it, it's not, um, it's not uh, it, there's no consensus on whether or not it's an actual crystal or if it just has that formation. At any rate, if it's plume, that just means that it has age on it, and a lot of times that will have uh, different flavor um, characteristics added to the tobacco, but if it's mold, you have to throw it out. Anyway, this was plume. I am surprised that it having plume at only a little over a year old. It says on tobacco reviews that it is a flake. However, when I open it up, if... Uh, Jojo Piper, if he rubbed it out, that might be the cause, but this is actually more of a broken flake. Moisture content is good. So let me rub some out here, load my pipe, and I will be right back with you to give you my first impressions. Hold on, everyone. All right, everyone, I've got my pipe loaded up, and as always, when I'm doing my reviews, I am going to be reviewing this blend for my first impression. Out of my Meerschaum, this is an AKB Tekken tomato with lattice finish. So, let's get lit. So this is very interesting. This is considered an English blend. A lot of times with English blends, it's very hard to be able to um, distinguish the layers in order to uh, test its complexity because the Latakia is such a robust blend, uh, uh, tobacco type that it generally demands the leading role. With this, however, the Latakia is forward. You get that very deep, minerally, earthy, peaty, leathery, uh, Latakia. But just under that, you can easily distinguish the Red Virginias coming through with just a little bit of that tartness. The Red Virginias are coming through with just a little bit of that tartness and offering that bready sweetness. And just between that, you can catch wisps of that drier uh, mustiness from the Orientals in this. You can get the floral notes from the Orientals swaying in there as well. It's almost like the, uh, the Red Virginias, that tanginess of the Red Virginias is just kind of holding on to the Latakias. <laughs> either the mail carriers, I don't know what time it is, either the mail carriers here or UPS or something. But
That's awesome, though. The Perique, I'm not. Hmm. Yeah, you can. The Perique, I'm not catching a lot of the fruitiness from it. But you definitely get that spice, especially if, uh, through the retro hell. You can catch the spice. But the stewed fruits that you, you get sometimes with a high concentration of Latakia, I'm not catching that. I'm getting the spice from, I mean, from the preek. I'm getting the spice from the preek, and I'm getting the tang and the deeper berry uh, type flavors, the rye berry and uh, red berries, uh, malted grain from the Red Virginias, but they're just underlying the Latakia. And the Orientals are giving that dry, floral, musty uh, uh, flavor that is just basically surrounding these. That Perique is offering that um, thicker mouthfeel. The Perique and the Latakia are working together to offer a very thick mouthfeel on this. Mm. <laughs> I love a good English or Balkan blend, and if you can put Red Virginias in it, jeepers, creepers, all the better. Mm. Yeah, I can definitely catch toasted white bread in this, and that's going to be coming from both your Turkish and your uh, Red Virginias. It could be that they're playing together because they, they both offer uh, similar undertones of that bready type uh, flavor characteristic. And those Latakias are just beautiful. Let me smoke this to the midway point, and I'll get right back with you to give you my final thoughts on my first impression. Stick around, everyone. All right, everyone. So I smoked the pipe down to the midway point. Let's relight and see what the final verdict is. The Virginia's got sweeter. The, the red Virginia's in this after stoving and, and halfway through the bowl have definitely gotten a little bit sweeter. I would say the tang from the red Virginia's has increased just a little bit as well. I think those are, are the two most noticeable changes that I've, I'm encountering here. The Red Virginias are offering a little bit more sweetness and that tangy, uh, deeper, fruity type flavors from the Red Virginias are coming through more pronounced now. Just a really good English blend. That Perique is offering, <laughs> I've done something different with my mustache. Usually, I roll it on the ends into, uh, I, I, I guess it's called a handlebar. And today, I was just not in the mood to try to put the wax on it. it it's really a pain in the butt. So today, all I did, I put a little wax on it to hold it in place, and I brushed it. But I've got one little hair here that's trying to hold my lip up, and it's driving me crazy. Anyway. Just a really great English blend. This has a lot of complexity that you generally wouldn't find in an English blend or none that, not that I have tried yet. There's, 
I haven't tried every English blend out there. And I am by no means an expert on the subject. But a lot of times with an English blend, you get a lot of Latakia and the other components, you, you don't really get the opportunity to uh, analyze them as deeply. But with this, the Perique is offering that spicy, um, it's just an envelope of spiciness that's, that's, that's covering the entirety of, of this blend. Then you have, right up front, you have the Latakia, which is offering that peaty, smoky, leathery, earthy type uh, flavor. Right under it, you're getting just a little bit of that bready sweetness from the Red Virginias. That's got an underlying tone of that rye berry tangy, uh, uh, deeper red fruits, red berries, that uh, malted fr uh, grain. And it plays in with the Turkish Orientals, which is giving you a little bit of floral, uh, musty, dry type smoke flavors. Mm. I'm actually starting to find, I'm not sure exactly the timeline that this is going to upload. I did a first impression just recently of Blue Ridge. And I'm finding that Orientals and Red Virginias play really well together. And in this blend, just like in Blue Ridge, you can see how the Red Virginias and Orientals are coming together to play against, not against, they're playing off of one another. The floral notes in the Orientals and that uh, acidic, tangy tartness from the Red Virginias is playing in very well together. They're complementary. And it's very nice. For as robust as a Latakia generally is, and this is, it's interesting to have the complexity that this is offering. A wonderful smoke. Jojo, thank you very much for sending this to me. I am enjoying it very much. This is something that I am going to find a lot of pleasure in smoking. So thank you for sending it to me. A great English blend. If you haven't tried it, highly suggested. All right. Give me about a week and I'll give my full review. I'll show you how I rate it and then the recommendation rating that I give it. But until then, everybody, that's going to do it for this episode of Full Dottle. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. And until the next time we see each other, I bid you farewell and happy piping. Goodbye, everyone. Have you joined the Full Dottle platoon yet? It's easy. Just click the subscribe button. Also, don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified as soon as I upload the next episode.